Everyone knows the King James Version was translated in 1611, but almost no one has read a 1611 King James Version. Not only do the great majority of King James editions actually come from a 1769 revision, one of a series of revisions, but even the 1611 editions available online are not perfect representations of the intentions of the King James translators. In an era before computers, typographical errors were introduced into the very first printed editions of the King James Bible. Subsequent printers and editors over a century and a half built up their own patina of miscellaneous minor alterations on top of the King James, until the text we now generally use was established by Oxford's Benjamin Blaney almost 250 years ago. If you want to know what the King James translators really intended, you need the New Cambridge Paragraph Bible edited by David Norton. I have the companion volume here, the textual history of the King James Bible, that shows the kind of amazing detailed work that Norton did on the King James. He did textual criticism on the King James. Norton, like FHA Scrivener before him, dedicated years of his scholarly life to blowing away thousands of specks of dust from the received text of the King James. He looked at the personal diaries of King James translators. He learned Hebrew. He went to Oxford's Bodleian Library and studied the surviving notes from the translator's work, particularly their scrawls on unbound copies of the 1568 Bishop's Bible, which they were instructed to revise. Norton performed his task with excessive care. To call him detail-oriented would be like calling Paul an influential theologian or Spurgeon good with words. Even though Cambridge University Press, one of two historic centers of work on the King James Version, authorized Norton's text-critical work, it has not achieved the traction that I think it deserves. It's been treated with suspicion by the people who might most have welcomed it, King James-only Christians, and ignored by almost everybody else. Those reactions may have been predictable, but they're both wrong. Those who are King James only will love the New Cambridge Paragraph Bible by Norton if they give it a chance. And through it, others might just rediscover the beauty and importance of an historic English Bible translation. All English Bible readers can benefit from the New Cambridge Paragraph Bible. Those who believe that the King James Version is the only acceptable English Bible translation should get the real deal. And if others are going to read the King James, and I do it for study and comparison nearly every day, they too should know what the original said. Benjamin Blaney's 1769 revision work that I hold here was excellent and has become the standard King James Version. The same ought to now happen with Norton's work. Norton rightly praises Blaney's efforts, but it's rather arbitrary that an 18th century revision of the King James is the one that's stuck. Everyone who uses the King James and knows that that's what they're doing ought to use the New Cambridge Paragraph Bible instead. People trust the King James Version. I don't treat that trust lightly, and I happen to believe that the King James translators did excellent work. I even see significant advantages for the church and even for the culture when one translation rises far above the rest. But English has changed a lot in 400 years, often in subtle ways that English speakers can't be expected to recognize. If you've watched any of my channel, you know this. Therefore, anyone who publishes a King James edition bears responsibility to make it as readable as possible. Many Bible publishers don't do this, but Norton, working with Cambridge University Press, did. His careful philological work revealed that the King James translators, like all writers of their day, were inconsistent in their spelling practices. So he conformed spelling to contemporary norms, but without changing archaic words. Spake is now spoke, show with an E is now show with an O. Seth did not become says, however, because that would be a major alteration of the character of the language. This spelling update honors the authorial intention of the King James translators while eliminating unnecessary distance between us and them, a distance which makes reading unnecessarily difficult for contemporary readers. Reading a first edition King James with its gothic type and, to us, odd spelling is very distracting. The 17th and 18th century editions themselves updated King James spelling. What looks like witnef became witness, cometh becomes cometh, low becomes love, and I think we can all be thankful they did. Why not update that spelling just a bit more? No words are being changed. Here's Norton at that same verse. John bore witness of him and cried, saying, This was he of whom I spoke. He that cometh after me is preferred before me, for he was before me. And of his fullness have all we received, and grace for grace. As you can see, Norton also gave careful attention to typography. That's a big reason why his work is called a paragraph Bible. 
The other is that he is following in the tradition of F.H.A. Scrivener's 1873 Cambridge Paragraph Bible edition of the King James. Another excellent scholarly edition of the King James, and a book that Lagos worked very hard to release in our format. Norton's text is presented in a single column layout, which, as I have often argued, facilitates contextually sensitive reading. He added in paragraph breaks where the King James lacks them. He notes that one of the curiosities of the King James Bible is that there are no paragraph marks after Acts 20 and only one in Psalms. He laid out the poetry as poetry rather than as paragraph chunks. Other things being equal, this layout with both poetic lines and elegant paragraph divisions is easier to read than a layout with no line or paragraph divisions, or the more common King James layout in which every verse, an arbitrary division already, is made into a separate paragraph. Norton also added quotation marks, a seemingly small change which is nonetheless a profound help to today's readers. He eliminated the confusing custom of using italics to mark words supplied by the translators, a uh, practice that, Norton argues persuasively, actually obstructs readers and looks like emphasis to modern eyes when that was not the King James translator's intent. If you think those italics are beneficial, Norton has some wise reasons to reconsider. The King James Version was itself a revision of a revision of a revision. The King James translators were instructed to revise the 1568 Bishop Bible, which in turn revised the Great Bible, a revision of Tyndall. On the very first page, the King James proclaims that it was produced with the former translations diligently compared and revised. And today, nothing short of a genuine revision will make the King James as readable as the NIV or even the ESV, which is a revision of a revision of a revision of the King James Version. But Norton did everything within his power to make the text of the King James accessible to contemporary readers without revising it. The New Cambridge Paragraph Bible is a beautiful, useful volume. If Bible readers prefer the King James, this is the edition they should read. If Bible students wish to study the King James, and I think they should, this is the edition they should turn to. The best tool for the job. I love the King James Version, and I always will. I memorized countless verses and phrases from it as a child. But it is no longer a vernacular Bible translation, and never again will be. A claim I have backed up in my Lexham Press book, Authorized the Use and Misuse of the King James Bible. But I don't wish to escape the influence of the venerable King James Version, even if it were possible. I am genuinely thankful for its outsized role in English Bible history. I think it has had profoundly positive effects, as any good Bible translation in any language will do because they are God's words. It is natural and understandable that such a Christian monolith will take time to replace. And while it still has a hold on English-speaking Christianity, 55% of Bible readers in a recent poll said they were using the King James. We should make the King James as accessible as possible. The new Cambridge Paragraph Bible is the best tool for that job, both in print and in digital formats. It ought to become the new standard edition of the King James Version. Theological writers who cite the King James ought to consider citing this edition. Pastors who, for various reasons, preach from the King James should, ideally, use it as well. There are tiny minor variations within the printed and electronic copies of the King James, as my company, Logos Bible Software, found out many years ago when we tried to discover what is the actual official text. There wasn't one official text. There are several. The New Cambridge Paragraph Bible is the best candidate to be the new standard.